Hey now, it's Phil P. Hardy from Screenwriters Talking Shop, and I'm here at my desk today to talk about the Beat Sheet, particularly one created by Blake Snyder, the author and creator of uh, Blake Snyder's Save the Cat software and his screenplay book, which has legions of followers that enjoy this formula for putting together their three-act screenplays. It's a popular tool for analyzing story structure and developing it. So if you allow me to get to uh, the page here where the beat sheet is, I will start to discuss those items with you. So item one on the beat sheet is uh, page one. The first impression of what a movie is. It establishes the mood and type of film we are about to watch. The opening image and the final image should be opposites, a plus and a minus. So dramatic that it documents the emotional upheaval that the movie represents. So you can show your character as one thing and by the end of the film, he's completely or she has uh, morphed into something completely different. Take a character arc, if you will. Um, so then we move on to number two, and these things are supposed to happen by specific pages on the beat sheet. This is the theme. The theme should be stated, and they're suggesting page five, and themes can be love, money, or greed, or if you look at a film like The Last Samurai starring Tom Cruise, the character of Nathan Algren begins as a drunken, burned out uh, soldier in the 19th century. He's a cavalry man who's ridden with Custer and he's done some bad things. And he goes to Japan to be a military consultant and he turns into uh, something completely different by the end of the film. And if you ask me, the theme of that movie is honor. That movie is all about the honor of the samurai culture and how Nathan Algren regains the honor that he lost by doing the things he did when he rode with General Custer. So to me, that would be the theme of The Last Samurai. That's the way I interpret it. So somewhere in the first five minutes of a well-structured screenplay, like you take Last Samurai again, the opening scene is they show you a drunken Nathan. So you see him doing a shooting demonstration and that establishes right away that he's kind of a burnout in the truck, right? So they're doing that early on. I guess it's in the first 10 minutes of the film. And so what they're suggesting is this should happen starting at page five, where we pose the question or the statement, usually about the main character of what that person is or what the theme is about. Again, being things like love or money or greed, which I've written down here. So that's the theme. That's number two of this 15 step beat sheet. And I'm gonna to try to move this along as quickly as possible. So number three is the setup. And that begins uh, pages one through 10, the first reel or the first 10 minutes. Sets up the hero, the stakes, and the goals of the story, and should do it with vigor. You don't want to bore people, right? Make the point to introduce, or at least hint at introducing every character in the A story. The first 10 pages is also where we start to plant every character tie, exhibit every behavior that needs to be addressed later on, and show how the hero or antagonist will need to change in order to save the day or win. So again, let me go back to, it's a great example. Let me go back to uh, Last Samurai. Nathan Algren in the first, I think it's the first act of the movie. He's got to dry out because he's a bad alcoholic, you know. He's drinking sake uh, in the movie and there's a certain point where he detoxes himself while he's healing from his wounds. So this is exactly the thing they're talking about in the setup. Then there's the catalyst. Catalyst is item number four. Should happen by number 12. And what I think that this is also what I would call the inciting incident of the screenplay. And my philosophy is I usually try to have this happen, whether it be a catalyst or inciting incident, whatever you want to call it, should happen probably within the first 15 pages. And for me, I like to get them done by page 10, although I don't hold myself to any particular uh, hard and fast rule. It happens when it feels right. So the catalyst kickstarts the action. Uh, this may include telegrams, the guy getting fired, he catches his wife in bed with his boss or somebody else, news that he has three days to live, like uh, 
Uh, what's that? I can't think of that screenplay where the guy finds out he's poisoned. Um, but anyway, uh, there's a knock on the door, a messenger, something special happens. So that's your inciting incident, your catalyst. That's item number four. Moving on to number five, the debate. This transpires on pages 22 to 25, as suggested by the Blake Snyder beat, the beat sheet. The debate section is the last chance for the hero to say, This is crazy. Should I go? Dare I go? Sure, it's dangerous out there, but that's my choice. That's my decision. Stay here. And the debate section must ask the question of some kind. Okay? So gives the, is, is the guy, the protagonist, going to have the moxie to do what he needs to do and take his hero's journey? So that's the debate. And then we move on to number six, which references page number 25. And it's an act break. Uh, it's a break into the act break is the moment where we leave the old world behind. snap -o. We leave the old world behind and proceed into the world that is upside down. The upside down version. Something must happen on this page. So in this case, they're saying it must happen on page 25. Number seven. The B story, beginning on page 30. The B story of most screenplays is the love story. It's also the story that carries the theme of the movie. The B story can often introduce a brand new set of characters, often a friendship story. So that's the B story, number eight. We're at the halfway point here of the B sheet. It's the fun and games part. Everybody's had a fun and games part of a screenplay. Um, this reminds me of a scene I have in a screenplay I wrote called K Sera, which is kind of a rom-com about a female musician. She has a date with a guy that she becomes involved with, and the fun and games take place at Santa Monica Pier, where they're on the where they're on the rides, the Ferris wheel. They play whack-a-mole. They're eating cotton candy, and I do that in what I call a series of shots, or whether you call it a montage, however you deliver it. I deliver it in a series of shots, and that's the fun and games portion of the screenplay. Now, I didn't know that. I just do this naturally because I've never used a beat sheet. But this is what they call it on Blake Snyder's beat sheet, and it should happen between pages 30 and 35. The midpoint. That takes us all the way up to page 55. The movie's midpoint is either up where the hero seemingly peaks, though it is a false peak, or down when the antagonist's world collapses all around and the hero thought it also could be a false collapse and only get better from here on out. The stakes are raised at the midpoint and the only rule is it's never as good as it seems to be at the midpoint and never as bad as the all is lost point and that's beat number 11. This is beat number nine, so we're jumping ahead. So remember, that is the midpoint. Number 10, the bad guys close in, and that should be happening on pages 55 through 75. This is the point where the bad guys decide to regroup and send in the heavy artillery. That could be uh, some sort of giant bot, or uh, it could be a tank or a nuclear warhead, God knows, whatever they got. Whatever their artillery is, depending on the scope of your story. It's the point where internal dissent, doubt, and jealousy begin to disintegrate the hero's team, if he has a team. Sometimes these guys work alone. Now we get to beat 11. Now we get to the all is lost moment. All is lost is the matching beat to the midpoint. These two beats are always in verses of each other. We know it is the opposite of the midpoint in terms of an up or a down. It also is the point of the script that is most often labeled the false defeat. Even though it looks like all is black for the antagonist, it's just temporary. Of course, you may have a downer ending and your protagonist is screwed. But in this type of uh, structure, all aspects of the hero's life are in a shambles. So this is where, you know, your superhero gets his ass kicked and he's thrown into a, a jail cell or something like that happens, okay? All is lost moment. Um, the one I think of is where it looks like, uh, even though the character seems invincible in uh, the one where, Liam Neeson, what's the one where he's looking for his daughter? 
um, the name escapes me, but there's a scene where um, he's captured and they got him chained up to this big pipe and it looks pretty bad for him because one of the bad guy goes, okay, kill this prick and get him out of here. Of course, Liam Neeson miraculously breaks the pipe and gets away and he beats the crap out of the bad guys and he kills the other bad guy. So all is not really lost because in Taken, that's the name of the film, sorry, in Taken, that all is lost moment only really lasts for about a couple minutes. And that's really one of the only points in the film where Liam Neeson isn't kicking the snot out of everybody. But you got to have one of those in that type of a screenplay because that's what people expect. Again, so that's the all is lost moment. That brings us to number 12, Dark Knight of the Soul, pages 75 through 85. This section depicts how your character experiences and feels the all is lost point. We've all been there, hopeless, clueless, drunk, and stupid, sitting on the side of the road with a flat tire with four cents in your pocket and late for the big appointment that will save our lives. Well, I don't know about you, but I haven't had four cents in my pocket in a long time because I strictly use plastic to pay for everything. But there you go. So that brings us to number 13, which is Break Into 3, which I'm assuming they mean Act 3 at page 85. Okay, the solution, Eureka. Both in the external, the A story, and the internal story, the B story, which is now, they, now these two have met, these stories have intertwined, the heroes prevailed, passed every test, dug deep, and has found the solution. Now all he has to do is apply it. An idea to solve the problem has emerged, right? So I was watching Batman Begins the other day, and they figure out the way to distribute the antidote to uh, counteract the poison in the third act. And Batman and, and uh, Sergeant Gordon go off in their particular duties to administer the solution. Commissioner, not Commissioner, Sergeant Gordon's in the, the prototype Batmobile and Batman, you know, hooks himself onto the train and he gets to the bad guy. And so that is uh, exactly what we're talking about, the break into three. Uh, the finale takes place between pages 85 and 110, where the lessons are learned and applied. It is where the character ticks are mastered. The chief source of the problem, a person or thing, must be dispatched completely for the new world order to exist. That's the finale. And then finally, we have number 15, the final image. This is the opposite of the opening image. Remember, we talked about that at the beginning. The final image of the movie is the opposite of the opening. It is proof that change has occurred and that it's real. And that's referring to the protagonist. So, uh, again, let's look at Batman Begins. We start with uh, a disillusioned Bruce Wayne and he goes to meet that gangster and you know he gets told off by the gangster in Gotham. I can't think of the guy's name. And then he winds up getting thrown out of uh, the nightclub and then he hops afraid and he goes to the Far East and becomes a criminal and eventually joins the order where he meets the Liam Neeson character. But a bing. But by the end of the movie, um, Batman begins. Batman is to find himself. He is the crime fighter at the end of the movie. That is the polar opposite image to the uh, younger Bruce Wayne who doesn't really know how he's going to avenge the death of his parents. So there we have it. That's the way I'm applying it. It's Blake Snyder's beat, uh, beat Sheet, a tool for you to put together your screenplay. I hope this helps. If you need one of these beat sheets, I have a couple different versions on file on PDF or MS Word, and I'd be delighted to give one to you. We'll talk to you soon.